Hey y'all, welcome back to the Don't Mom Alone podcast. I'm your host, Heather McFadden, and this is the place where I get to walk alongside you and connect you with people and resources so you know that you don't mom alone. And in this episode number 361, we're doing things a little bit different. We're actually taking the audio from an Instagram live that I did last October with my friend, Brittany Turner. And so we have to trust that God is going to be God in our kids' lives, that he's going to ask us to take some responsibility. He's going to ask us to do some important things and stewarding and loving them and directing them. But that at the end of the day, we have to kind of surrender that. Brittany has come on the show before, episode 277, which we've linked to in the show notes. Since even this recording that we did in the fall, she's had her fourth kiddo. What I appreciate from Brittany is her views, her theological views uh, as a seminary grad and being in the mom little years. I think she provides a great perspective on the content I share with y'all. She's one of my go-to fake uh, board of directors when I'm thinking through topics. And in this episode, the reason we wanted to publish it on the podcast is, okay, so last week, Mary Van Geffen, she's been on the show before. She's a parent coach to spicy kids. If you're needing help, I put her links in the show notes. But she shared an article she'd found from the New York Times entitled Harsh Realm of Gentle Parenting. And she made a good point that a lot of the examples in the article of gentle parenting are more permissive parenting and um, a little bit of an extreme view. There is a gentle parenting option that's more mid-range to the examples given. But the thing that I noted was how sometimes parenting gurus or experts are letting parents know that how they say things and how they craft their conversations with their kids has huge impacts on how their kids turn out. There was even a book referenced in the article that gave parents of preschoolers ways to phrase things so that their kids were less likely to have substance abuse issues as adults. And to me, that is super weighty, super heavy, and too much, too much for us to bear. So I reminded (laughs) Instagram of a phrase that I use in the first chapter of my book. You are important, but not essential that the full weight, the full weight of responsibility for how your kids turn out is not dependent on you. And there was such a strong response of thank you, thank you, I needed to hear that, that I thought, you know what, we need to have a whole episode (laughs) dedicated to that. And so this conversation that I had with Brittany was from around my book launch, and she and I talked about the concept, and she shared really great thoughts about who God is in our lives Um, because like she just said in that clip, showing our kids our weaknesses, showing them the process that we're on to become more like Christ and recognizing that he's doing the same thing in their own life, that he loves them more than we ever could and that nothing we do is going to disrupt the plan he has for them. He's not like, oh my goodness, I can't believe that just happened. I'm so surprised. I'm so so upset that Heather just parented that way because that's just ruining all of the plans I had for her boys. So there's a little bit of relief in holding on to these theological truths. And so Brittany and I are going to break that down in this episode. Um, I hope it is an encouragement to you because it really is for me to go back and to re-listen and maybe just keep re-listening to be reminded of that. Another thing um, I wanted to bring up that I talked about in the book is a dinner party I was at, and this is not a name dropping situation, but John Townsend was there. He wrote the book Boundaries, and I was telling him about the You're Important but Not Essential. And he told me a story about how when he and Henry Cloud were teaching, and a parent asked, how, what percentage am I responsible for how my kid turns out? And what percentage is my child responsible for their outcome, their adult outcome? And they said, okay, well, let's play a little game. Henry Cloud's going to write down a number and uh, John Townsend's going to write down a number. And then we're going to show the audience and see if they match just based on anecdotal 
information just from our time as counselors and knowing people and meeting with people. So they both wrote down a number and they showed it. (laughs) Do you have any guesses? What do y'all think? Do you think you're 80% responsible? Do you think you're 50-50? Well, the number that they both showed, again, this isn't like based on any sure research, but they both wrote 30%. As parents, we're 30% responsible for how our children turn out, which means we're not completely off the hook (laughs) because here's the deal. Marketer John Wanamaker famously said, half the money I spend on advertising is wasted. The trouble is, I don't know which half. And in parenting, that is the trouble. We don't know what 30%, which thing is going to be what impacts my child. And so often we could have four children, three children, two children in our home, do the exact same thing for all of them. And the result, (laughs) so varied. Uh, But That's the point. That is where faith comes in. That's where we recognize that our intentions matter. That's chapter two. Our intentions matter. God cares about our heart. Your desire to be a good mom is huge, (laughs) huge. And to trust him more for his part and to lean into your responsibility, your part. And then bonus, what we talk about in this episode is inviting others in releasing that everything is up to you and that by asking for help, that makes you a bad mom. I would never look at a new mom and say, if she called me up and she's like, hey, can you just come over and hold my baby while I go take a shower? And I'm like, no, you terrible mom. I would say, I'd be thrilled to if I'm available. I'd be thrilled to. I love holding babies. And good for you for recognizing you've hit your limits. And uh, that makes her a way better mom in my mind. So, all right, let's get to the conversation. Here we go. Okay, okay y'all, this so is we were- Brittany. She's amazing. She <laughs> is in Dallas with me. She has three girls to my boys, and then she has younger girls than my kids. Yes. And she reached out to me. We've met pre-pandemic. I mean, we did. When we could Just go to like We squeaked shops. it in. We squeaked it in and pre-pandemic. It, yeah, we were. We were bringing the heat. And then... Uh, she's so sweet. I'm going to brag on you that every month you reach out to me to know what to pray for, which is huge. Y'all don't even know if someone's doing ministry, it's very rare that someone offers prayer. So that's a way you can help someone, um, that you are a part of their ministry that way. That's a huge help. So she's on the prayer ministry and my fake board of directors, she gives insight (laughs) to when I have interviews. So that's Brittany. And she has she dropped something amazing, and then my phone got too hot. So take two. Okay, so what we were talking about, we talked about the whole idea from the first chapter of the book that we are essential but not important. And I was saying it was a struggle for me because I think in motherhood we get this God complex. We, we get the complex that everything we do, and it's all a sum of our efforts. I was like, but it's like any other investment that we steward. We just don't know what the outcome is going to be. And so we have to trust that God is going to be God in our kids' lives, that he's going to ask us to take some responsibility. He's going to ask us to do some important things in stewarding and loving them and directing them. But that at the end of the day, we have to kind of surrender that. And I was like, but that's hard to grapple with as the first lie in the book, because you're like, no, I am, I am the most important. And so you gave this great example Uh, But what about the mother that passes away? And we're okay with people stepping in to support that family then, but we can accept that same basic base level support now. And I said, community for me has been huge. You know, I said that that same kind of thing that letting people in and I was like, but it's been hard, you know, post pandemic relationships have changed. Dynamics have changed. And, um, you know, it's just been hard. And I was saying that I was sitting at the gym, my girls do cheerleading. And I was sitting at the gym this week and a couple of moms were talking behind me. And I think I was either on the phone or recording, doing my mom thing. And one of them was like, yeah, Brittany, I just give you so much credit because you have more than two. And I just feel like I only have one hand for each. You know, you just got to have one hand for each. And, you, you know, you have more kids than you have hands. And I was sitting there and I was thinking about it. And then it dawned on me and I was like, so you get more hands like, you know, you you, you don't stop 
doing with God or accepting with God. Because to tell you the truth, like my family, unfortunately, is like the poster child for failed birth control, like the poster child. And not just like me and my husband, like we can go back. My mom was on this early. We were laughing. I was like, it just, we need to tell people when they get of age in our family, this may not work for you. It might, <laughs> but it's just, it's really bad. But you know, hey, I was, I was the girl born when my mom had an IUD in. Okay. So, I've had one of those. That was my second. Okay. I'm in there with it. You know, I, yes. good things come when you're trying to keep them from coming. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I mean, okay. you know, I was, I was telling them, I was like, I'm so sensitive to the need, you know, to people who struggle with infertility and stuff like that. Cause I have a ton of friends that I pray for that too. But like, I also have friends in my life where we're like, Oh my gosh, like I cannot believe what yep. the Lord, <laughs> like, you know? And so, but she said that she, I was like, you just get more hands. And at the time I was thinking about how helpful my older kids are, how I don't, the more kids I've added. So we're, you know, we added a third baby, like literally December, 2019, right before the pandemic. And I was like, when she came, I realized I could not do all the things even in my house by myself. And I'd sat with some, um, I have a friend, like one of our friends, she's on here now, she has five kids. And I remember asking her, like, how do, how do you keep the house clean? How do you make time to do the dishes? Like everybody needs all the things and all the things need to be washed. And she was just like, you don't do all the things yourself. And then she told, that was when she proceeded to tell me how little she cooks during the week. She was like, I just had to free up some time somewhere. And she was like, and no mom guilt, like no mom guilt, guilt about it. Like, and so it's just that idea that like for her, a set of hands was drive through or, you know, whatever pickup they go to or her mom's house on some weekends. For, for me, it's looked like, you know, <laughs> she's laughing now. <laughs> <laughs> but, Kelly. Yes, wow. Kelly is great though. But it, but it was freedom because I think yeah. we put so much weight on ourselves that we have to do all the things and we don't. I remember another recently somebody else was like well you can you know because my husband has, has a new job he's like she was like you should see if you can afford um just somebody to come in and clean the house once a month and i was like you know but in my world i was like no i have to keep the whole yeah. house and so i'm not even just talking about like community it is good to have people like i've had friends that have literally come over with me and been like we'll help you clean this or like i have a friend that has agreed i asked her i was like can you just come help me with the dishes she watches my girls for me i was like can can i also ask for help with the dishes and so once a week she's gonna help me with dishes so it just more hands gives me yeah. more space to steward because at the yeah. end of the day i don't want to be the mom that was screaming about my kids and my kids about all the clutter when it was something i had the ability to outsource and not everything can be outsourced but i just feel like we don't utilize community as much as we could I think, so i, I was think asking what you were question Yes, the, we need more, you need more hands. But I think where we got there was this idea that it's all up to us. And yes. you and I being very capable people that mm -hmm. that has worked for us in a lot of settings that we just apply more time, energy, effort, and things work out. Yep. And it's like, even with all the energy effort that we have, we are so limited. <laughs> we are so limited human beings. And when you have lots of small children, you get to the end of your limits real quick. Very quickly. And so, and so then you have to make the mental shift of, oh, I need more people or I need help in this area. Or I do not have to have a home cooked meal every single night with. Or I've got to let all it go. Different, yeah. I got to let some things go that I think make me a good mom, whatever good mom mm -hmm. is. And so mm -hmm. I think what you're saying is for some of us that hits, you know, in pregnancy for the first kid. Some people, that is your seventh child. I know people that have 10 or 11 children and they still look like they're thriving, at least on the Instagram. That's a whole other thing. But I just, I think that it starts with us freeing ourselves that you are not God. And that's what you said. Mm -hmm. You said, you said, you realize I am not God and God is God for them too, which yeah. was another huge drop that got lost when my phone got too hot. Okay, one way you could get more hands is to have your own personal stylist and shopper. And I'm going to help you out with one of our sponsors this week. It's Stitch Fix. I don't know if you've ever tried it before. I have a couple options for you. Maybe you've tried their method where you 
take the style quiz and they have your sizes and your preferences and what colors you like and your price range and they send you items, five pieces, you try them on, you keep what you like and you return the rest. Okay, and maybe that's worked for you, maybe it hasn't, maybe you've never tried that. Well, another option is Stitch Fix Freestyle. It's like an online shop built just for you. They take all of your answers from the quiz and they curate an online store that you can shop from. Super cool. To get started, again, just go fill out your free style quiz at stitchfix.com slash DMA. They have brands you know and trust like Madewell and Sanctuary. You are gonna get looks that are just perfect for you, especially if you're refreshing this spring. Maybe you're finally going on trips. I feel like everyone's going to Italy this summer. Everyone's going to Italy. If you need clothes, go to stitchfix.com slash DMA to try Stitch Fix. Stitchfix.com slash DMA. And I think it's important because like, then it gives us space to be human, right? Because Mm -hmm. like for me, Mm -hmm. I'm still unpacking a lot of stuff from my childhood. So as I was walking through it and we've talked on your podcast, like I've had postpartum depression, I've had depression in other areas of my life. Then when I struggle, right? And I think I am essential to my kids development. Then I don't give myself the grace I need to heal, you know, to love them the way they need to be loved. Because, you know, sometimes then I'm worried that my brokenness is going to damage them beyond repair. Um, But when I trust that God is the ultimate source, that he can send other people to love my kids and other people. And when I'm and I'm communicating that to my people. Right. Like I need prayer for this. Can someone come take as if your journey in that depression isn't part of their testimony of him showing how faithful he is. You don't have to be perfect for them to witness who God's character is. I mean, over and over and over in the Bible, we see God's character revealed in the limitations and the weaknesses of people. And so Mm -hmm. laying our kids into our weaknesses, even if we lose our mind and yell, and that is not how we want to parent. and, And then we, have guilt and then we have shame on top of it that I'm not worthy now because I made that mistake. It's like if we show them, oh my goodness, I I do need Jesus every day. Please forgive me. And we show them that repentant heart and we say, I'm so thankful that that's not how God parents me. And yeah. the kindness of the Lord, he mm-hmm. is it doesn't change what he thinks about me because I made that mistake. If we model that, that's a gift. But if we look perfect and polished even to our own children, I think that keeps them from knowing what the power of the gospel, the good news. And we that's, are so, then our own that's so good. Yes. Yes. And I, I tell my oldest, she, she's old enough to have these kind of conversations. She's seven. And she's, if yeah. you ever met my oldest, she just, she's a, a ball full of, you know, communications. Like she would be on this live if I let her. Um, but we talk a lot about mommy's shortcomings, how much mommy yeah. apologizes how much yeah. mommy desperately needs Jesus and how much mommy's not going to make it through the day without Jesus' strength, you know? And I, I show her that because I'm like, at the end of the day, my job is not to make you utterly dependent on me, you know? Like, that's not yeah. my job. I fail you if I do that as a parent because then when you have to go out on your own, you're going to be wanting to lean on mommy forever. What you yeah. need more than anything else, more than the best schooling more than, you know, all of these other great things is you need a relationship with Jesus. You can trust because the one thing I know is life is going to hit you and mommy's not going to be able to protect you. But the one gift I can give you that it's unchanging is a relationship and dependency and a trust in Jesus that will, will last you your whole life. And that's what I'm trying to give away. But that also can't, be just me you know we think about it you know those of us who send our kids to school we think we outsource school you know like those of us you know who put our kids in children's ministry we want that support there but it goes so much deeper than that that you know we get to show our kids the diversity of god's love and faithfulness in other and other people when we let them in you know so like we were just talking like in my depression it takes me saying I am struggling and can use X, Y, and Z, you know? And even when I can't say I am struggling and I don't know what I need, but allowing those people in so that God can be the source, you know? Because if I can't feed my kids today, I've had friends send me money for food, like, and they have fed my kids. And I say, today we're thanking such and such a person because they sent money for food 
because mommy was just exhausted and we are just so grateful for God blessing yeah. them so they could bless us. And then when we do the same to others, it shows that God's hands and his people kind of work in tandem. So I would say, how do you, how have you found, have you found any ways to encourage people to do this post pandemic? Because relationships yeah. and how we do life has shifted so much. I think it, it does require like this work with God, like we were just talking about to figure out who he is and who, what our identity is in him. Because I think if we're secure in that, then we're willing to take the risk of inviting someone in or willing to take the risk of being vulnerable and, and creating deeper relationships. Um, we're willing to have our kids be messy in front of other people because none of that determines our worth and our value. And so let's say you do invite someone and they say, no, nah, that doesn't really work for me. It's not a personal rejection. It's just not your person. And so then you can move mm -hmm. on to the next person, but it is... I found over and over again, the depth of relationships that I built from when I had my panic attack to when my dad passed away, that the time and energy spent in professional counseling, 12 step recovery and inner healing prayer to really work on what was going on in me and to develop those deep relationships alongside other people allowed me to have the kind of community that sustained me in the hardest season of my life. And so I just think it's worth the risk of vulnerability to have mm. that authentic connection. I just really keep the word vulnerability is you could be hurt. Like that mm -hmm. definition is you could be hurt here, but we have a healer who lives in us. And so even if people hurt us, he can heal us from that. Yes. And it is yes. better to take that risk and be, Ooh. Jesus went first. He was vulnerable upon vulnerable. He, he mm. went in the baby's body. He went on a cross naked. We can do this. You know what I mean? A baby's we body. He did go in a baby's body. That's the most vulnerable thing you could think of. Completely could be harmed. Now, Pe babies were being killed then. Yes. Babies were being killed at the time Jesus got in a baby's body. This is the ultimate vulnerability. But he Ooh. knew who God was. And he knew God's time. And that's why he kept telling the disciples, it's not time yet. It's not time yet. It's not time yet. And even when it was almost time, he's like, could we do it a different way? Okay. But your will, but not mine, you know? So I don't know if that's I'm so good. Maybe. No, but I love what you said about vulnerability because you said we serve a God. Vulnerability is the ability to be hurt, but we serve a God that heals. Like that's, that's the yeah. dependency we've been kind of talking about. Like you say, if you have that relationship with Jesus that says, I'm not looking to someone else to fill that void for me. I know yep. that you love me unconditionally, then you can take the pressure off other people. Another good thing for me is to take the pressure off other people to serve me the way I want them to serve me. Right. So like my husband, See, there's is my this. absolute. Yeah. Yes. He's my husband is my absolute best friend, but there have been seasons where he does not have the capacity to fill what I need, but God is still my source. So then I'm like, okay, God, I don't know any friend or person that can give what I feel like I need right this second can you yep. supernaturally send somebody send a message lead me to a scripture can you feel what yep. i need and he's always been faithful to that like whether it's been the yep. vulnerability of letting someone new in whether it's been the yep. vulnerability of opening up to someone old in a different way whether it's been like i'm there was literally i was like there is nobody that is given and I literally read a scripture and then it was like that fresh manna that comes out in the scripture just speaks to you in an entirely different way. And it brought me to tears. And I was like, what, but we can open up our arms to community. Like you said, when we trust that, you know, our, the success doesn't rise or fall on whether or not this works out the way I hoped. Like it doesn't mean it doesn't yeah. sting, but we, yeah. we are open but I to think it. That what you bring up is there are some people that'll be like, I am Heather. I'm so vulnerable. I keep reaching out. I keep, I keep going, going, going. And I think they're doing this too much and not enough this because mm. they need so much from people that that sends out Ooh. red flags to everyone. Like you need me to be Ooh. something that only God can be. And I can't be God for you. And so yes. that's, that, it, that like sends people away. And so if we don't do this work with God and get centered in that, and then, but we're trying to get it from people, like you said, from our husband, from our kids. Okay. Mm identity mm. and worth from our kids. They feel that pressure. That is why it was so important for me that this first third of this book was about 
what are the lies I'm believing and how does it relate to God's healing of me yes. before we yes. even start talking about the horizontal relationships Ooh, yes. with others and my kids. Okay. This episode is brought to you by Crossway and Kevin DeYoung's new book, The Biggest Story Bible Storybook. The Bible is a big book about a great God and from beginning to end, each page tells about the God who created the world, acted in history, and continues to act in the present. Beginning in Genesis and ending with Revelation, DeYoung retells the unified story of scripture through 104 easy to read Bible stories. Each reading is coupled with a beautiful illustration by award-winning artist Don Clark and concludes with a reflective prayer. It's perfect for bedtime stories or to read together as a family. Both children and parents alike will experience fresh, the captivating story of the Bible in an easy to understand, compelling way. You can pick up a copy wherever books are sold or visit crossway.org backslash plus, P-L-U-S, to find out how you can get 30% off. That's crossway.org forward slash plus to find out how you can get 30% off. Okay, Brittany has all the girls and I have the teens. But if you have a teen or tween girl in your life and you want a gift that she is going to love and that you can trust, then simply be box is the perfect gift for her. I'm thinking... Easter, this is going to be great. Simply Bee Box is a faith-based subscription box for teen and tween girls, and it's filled with fun, positive, on-trim items and encouragement to simply be who God created her to be. Each box is focused around one of what they call a B attitude, like be you, be strong, be kind, be a friend, and the reminders of who God created the girls to be and how he wants them to live. So the box has something to read, do, wear, eat, display, and use. Every single box has a seasonal or inspirational theme with those things. It ships quarterly, a fall box in September, winter in December, spring in March, summer in June. You can get an annual subscription. You can get a seasonal that auto renews each quarter or a one-time box, which is a perfect gift for any occasion. There are lots of subscription box options out there, but the Simply B box is different. You are going to get something that's going to empower your teen or tween girl. You know that the goal is to help grow her relationship with Jesus and know that they are uniquely and created and encourage them to live out their faith and be a light in this world. Simply Be Box has a, provided a discount code for our Don't Mom Alone podcast listeners. Use DMA Spring 10, one zero, the number, DMA Spring 10 to receive $10 off your subscription or spring box purchase. Head over to their website, Simply B Box, and B is with one E, bebox.com. Subscribe today so she'll receive her spring box just in time for Easter. You can also follow them on Instagram at Simply B Box. Yeah, and I, I had to be honest that even that kind of offness like, yeah. because I had a good relationship with the Lord, but my friendships were not like I was giving, giving, giving a lot in relationships and not getting a lot back. Um, and for me, like I, I was just believing the lie that I had to get certain approval from people that yeah. it sometimes it wasn't even just giving off red flags. I was picking wrong people. Like yep. I was picking yep. people that yep. already yep. did not have the capacity or didn't have mm -hmm. the maturity to give what I wanted. Right. At that. Right I was there. accepting yep. who was there because, you know, we recognize it all the time now. Right. And when people do it in romantic relationships, when they get in relationships and we're like, this is not, this is not good. They're like anxiously attached is the word in <laughs> attachment theory. They're like, re reassure me, reassure me, reassure me that you still like me. You still like me. And it's like, mm, see ya. And we, we, and we can see the red flags when people do it in romantic relationships, but we don't often see the red flags that we do in community. Like, and yeah. or just even the um like I was talking one time, this was a while ago, about how my community oftentimes desires mentorship 
but we um we are not willing to serve and this came from actually my husband my husband was serving under someone and he was like so many people he was serving under this guy who's a great producer my husband's a musician and he mentioned he was like so many people talk about i want to just be a fly on the wall i want to just learn from you i want to do all these things and he's like but that pulls that pulls emotional energy he's like so it's not that i don't want to help he's like but true people who were mentored in the bible like elijah and elijah they served underneath these people. They were apprentices. They learned beside them, but they also served and helped carry the weight of the ministry. Yeah. And the idea yeah. of that give and take, that selflessness can only come, you know, when you have that relationship with God, right? Because then God can whisper to yourself, offer this, serve this, and position you in a way to get what you think you wanted. So I'm That's excited. Good. I'm excited. I for think this is, book. this is so good. I'm scared it's gonna get not be saved, <laughs> but I'm gonna. I'm hoping. I'm praying. Brittany, you're amazing. It's gonna Thank save. It's gonna me. save. Thank you for doing part two, and um, y'all, if you're not following Brittany, you already you need to. God is speaking, <laughs> using, and doing a mighty work, and she's doing holy, Thanks holy Heather. things in her home too. So that is not. That's not a secondary thing. That's that is you're doing amazing stuff. So praying for y'all i'm excited i'm excited if you don't have the book if you haven't followed the podcast go get it it'll change your life yes, trust sweet. me there's so many times i'm like i don't know how to deal with this but i'm positive heather has a podcast on it somewhere uh, let me just go search the archives and i have giggle yet to be let down yet to be let giggle down. it yes well i <laughs> appreciate you so much thanks for doing this with me thank you for having me Thanks, y'all, for listening. I'm going to read this last paragraph from chapter one. Instead of believing the isolating idea that I am fully responsible for how my kids turn out and my value and identity are wrapped up in their outcome, I'm choosing to connect with God by remembering I'm important but not essential, focusing on my part to love, guide, connect with my kids, and letting him do his part to fulfill the purposes he's ordained in advance. Believing that God is fully capable to redeem and restore my kids. If he chooses not to do so this side of heaven, I can trust that he loves them more than I can imagine. By not blaming him or myself, but instead turning to God, I can find comfort grieving with him. Then I can move forward in the purposes he's planned in advance for me to do and let my kid be a jerk. Now, that let him be a jerk, that's a story from the beginning of the chapter, which I guess you're just going to have to read if you haven't read it yet. Um, I'm going to pray for us because this is, although a simple concept and we, we in our cores know it, I think if you really recognize your behaviors with your kids and with your friends and with your husband and with God, it, it creeps in. It's subtle, but it creeps in. Lord, um, we surrender our kids to you. We recognize that that you do love them more than we ever could, and I pray that you would Open our eyes to see where we're not trusting you. Open our eyes to see our part in our parenting and where we maybe need to step up and engage and be less distracted. But I also pray, Lord, that you would open our eyes to the grace that's available and that we would walk in that and release the pressure to perfectly phrase every interaction, to respond (laughs) as gentle as we think the other mom is, and to trust that you are a redeemer. You are a restorer. You're redeeming and restoring us as we grow in our motherhood role. And I pray, Lord, that we would surrender those parts to you. I pray for each mom and dad represented that they would be encouraged today to continue to go and grow in their knowledge of you, to increase their faith, and you, whatever hard thing is right in front of them, uh, that they would be able to hand it to you, God, and be filled with a spirit of peace and comfort. I praise you for what you do and trust us with, that we could walk in partnership with you in those things. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, y'all, I'll meet you back here next week. I think we have uh, Shauna Nequist joining us. She's pretty special. All right. Adios. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Don't Mom Alone podcast. 
If you're wanting to connect with more people and more resources to help remind you that you're not alone, head over to don'tmomalone.com. That's where you'll also find show notes with any links mentioned by our guests. Most importantly, I want you to know the good news, the great news that you're not alone because God has promised to always be with you. With faith in Jesus Christ, the one who died for you and rose again, Jesus said when he left, he was going to leave a helper, a comforter to be with us. God in us. Moms, that's super power. So while you're washing dishes at your kitchen sink, while you're driving to and from work, while you're feeding that baby late into the night, while you're cleaning sticky floors, God promises to be just as present with you as when you're worshiping in a church pew. As it says in Zephaniah three seventeen, the Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He takes great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love and he will rejoice over you with singing. Now that's good news. Have a great day.